Alright, the bike is, uh, for all intent and purposes, done, finally, after God knows how, many, how long, a couple years. Uh, a lot of it due to laziness and apathy, some of it due to uh, my being ill for a while, but in any case, at any rate, here it is. And uh, I just got back from a little test run. Having a problem with the carburetor, uh, but I'm sure it's an issue I'll be able to sort out at some point. So let's just take a little tour here, and uh, we'll just start kind of start at the back here, and I'll uh, talk about the things that I've done. Uh, one of them was I replaced the uh, original plastic rear fender that uh, was on the bike with a, a steel fender that I got uh, from a vendor online. I had to widen it. Uh, about four inches here in the center so it would fit the uh, tire it's made for a Harley. Uh, let's see, down to uh, uh, the swing arm. This is the swing arm version uh, 3.0. Uh, there was the original one then the one that I had made initially when I did the Ranger conversion. Uh, but I ended up having to modify it and cut it so many times that it, it got pretty ugly so I just built another one. Um, you can see, I hope, in here, the uh, drive pulley off of the Ranger transmission quite a bit larger than the uh, stock pulley that Boss Haas used uh, because the uh, gearing, of course, is completely different now. It has a, an actual uh, first gear and then a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio and high rather than the overdrive that Boss Haas used, so uh, hence the... the uh, larger pulley. The belt is a, a different belt than what Boss uses. Uh, used quite a bit shorter uh, to compensate for the uh, shorter swing arm. It was a belt that I had to, I actually had to buy it in a 90 millimeter width and bandsaw it in half. So I now have uh, this belt and uh, a spare in the garage. Um, here we can see uh, the on-off valve and, and uh, reserve uh, tank switchover valve. It's this uh, marine item that I bought to replace the electric fuel uh, switchover valve. Uh, I also uh, uh, welded these gussets into the frame. These frames have a tendency to break uh, in this area right here uh, because they're unsupported and as this uh, shock moves up and down it flexes them. So put the uh, gussets here on both sides and use that as a convenient spot here for my uh, uh, ignition switch, my fan, and uh, uh, fog light or running light switch. Uh, I replaced the camera back on the right spot here, the uh, original brass bushings, bronze bushings that uh, uh, the Boss Hoss originally had with these uh, browning uh, heavy-duty flange mount self-aligning ball bearings. Uh, we shouldn't have any issues here with the bronze bushings hammering out or, or anything like that. Uh, the, one of the main, of course, the main uh, reason for this entire thing was the installation of the uh, the Ranger transmission, um, which is under here. Of course, you can't see it because I failed to take the cover off. But, uh, but trust me, it's in there. Uh, in another video that I have on YouTube, there's a whole entire explanation on how the uh, uh, clutch mechanism works, but just uh, quickly, it's the original style of, of vacuum booster that uh, came on the clutch bikes, and in addition to that, there's a, a spring-loaded booster, uh, or what an engineer friend of mine called a self-biasing bell crank, and it's similar to what old older Harleys used. Uh, uh, the mouse trap uh, that they use to uh, make the uh, clutch easier to pull on their bikes. So, with the combination of the booster and the mouse trap, uh, the clutch works really, really well. Very, very uh, easy pull, considering the fact I'm pulling an automotive clutch with my hand. Uh, up here is the shifter that I uh, made. This replaces an earlier shifter that I'd built. Uh, it was kind of ugly, and it was a, a heel toe arrangement, and I. I decided after riding that a little bit, I didn't really need the heel toe, so I just made this one out of a, a piece of aluminum. Uh, behind here is the uh, bell crank that goes from the 
clutch cable to the booster. This is new, uh, about the, actually about the fourth iteration of the bell crank, uh, but and it has it operates off the same axis as the shifter. I've got a couple of Zerk fittings on here, so I can grease that. And it, I'm really really pleased with the way it works. Uh, in here, you can see the water pump that I built, uh, cast this housing, and the pulley. Uh, down in my garage, just using old uh, high school metal shop techniques, and uh, machine the housing on my lathe, and it, it, it uses a Chrysler uh, 383 440 uh, Hemi water pump, and it, it works works super well. Uh, so I don't have the problems with the uh, old Jabsco electric water pump any longer, uh, and it, it pumps uh, real well at. Uh, uh, of course, the faster the engine runs, the more the harder the pump, or the faster the pump spins. So it's more uh, uh, as the stock setup should be. Kind of come around here a little bit. Uh, in here, you might be able to see the uh, uh, fuel pressure gauge, and that's connected to the fuel uh, pressure regulator that I put in place to uh, when I installed the uh, brake pumps. Uh, manual or mechanical fuel pump in place of the uh, electric pumps they all used so I won't be having any electrical fuel pump issues like some of the guys seem to have all the hoses were replaced with the uh, braided black and the uh, black anodized AN fittings I'm not a big fan of the uh, stainless and the, those blue and red fittings, it just, it's a kind of an understated look. I like it better than all that flash and unnecessary uh, bling, I guess. Uh, let's see, while we're here, here's where I filled in the uh, uh, steering head from about this point back just to fill up that gap that they all seem to they have between the frame and the tank and also the uh, I filled in the tunnel here with a piece of sheet metal and made these two little uh, grills to kind of make it look different or make it look nice. I like it. Uh, let's see, coming back around here, uh, got the side cover off on this side. So this is the Blue Seas Marine Fuel Box, uh, or fuel, excuse me, uh, fuse box that uh, a lot of the guys are using. I put this in place of the. Uh, the one the Boss Hoss uses, which was not a particularly good unit. I rewired the whole bike. Uh, it no longer has the uh, master relay that they all have, which seems to be uh, troublesome. Uh, it's wired more like a, an automobile would be, uh, not using that uh, master relay. Um, so let's see, let's, let's move back around here to the other side. Uh, one of the things that I bought and found and I'm pretty happy with, and maybe we can see it here, it's called a Grip Ace, that's the brand name. Uh, and there are four buttons here on this little keypad that fit into the uh, hand grip, and they control the blinkers, the high beam, the low beam, the horn, and the start function. So I can start it off of this keypad on the hand grips, as well as the other functions, or I can start it like your car just by turning the uh, key all the way to the start position it'll fire so I've got a, a redundant uh, uh, starting system so kind of like an airplane with redundant uh, systems up here uh, I guess as you can see I took off all of the uh, switches that uh, came on the bike originally uh, so they're gone over here on the twist grip side uh, I just made these uh, collars out of aluminum to fill the spot where the uh, switches used to be. In this one, I uh, put a little kill button in there so I can uh, feel safer having a kill button right there at the, on the grips rather than have to reach down and turn the key to kill the engine. So again, another redundancy. I can cut the engine at the uh, handlebars or down at the uh, uh, key switch. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah. So anyway, and, uh, the grip ace, the uh, control pad, the wires. It's just uh, two wires come through the bars. Uh, 
and they connect actually I don't know if we can see it or not there it is to this little box right here a little black box and that controls uh, all of those uh, uh, functions and so far it works great uh, because I've only ridden the bike a uh, couple miles and uh, but uh, it, it all works and works as, as, as though it should and I did have an issue with the thing not working I sent it back to them they're real helpful they called me on the phone emailed me uh, got it back to me right away and it worked fine uh, here's a bank of relays that I installed to uh, con for the horn the fan the ignition high beam low beam uh, yeah here's the flasher uh, plugs to disconnect the wiring. Um, let me see. I think, by and large, that just about covers everything. Uh, in an earlier uh, post here on on, on my blog, uh, I sh showed how I had modified the gas tank so it comes right off. But a little bit better picture of what I'd done before. These little buttons uh, just attached to the gas tank and they fit into these uh, sort of saddle things I guess you'd call them that are welded to the frame. So the tank just slides towards the rear after you pull these little aircraft pins and it comes right off. So besides the moment, minute or two it takes to disconnect the fuel line, the tank will come off in about 10 seconds rather than the half an hour or so that it uh, it took in the past so uh, that is kind of uh, I guess a wrap that pretty much as I said explains everything that I've done one other issue that I'm having in regards to the shock absorber is since the uh, uh, distance from the axle to the mounting point to the pivot point here uh, has been changed and been altered quite a bit. It used to pivot right here. The shocks, uh, I need to go back to take them to Aldan and have them uh, put in some stiffer springs. The bike uh, bottoms out pretty badly uh, going into a corner, drags the pipes and uh, it's rideable but uh, not uh, not what I'd like. So that's, that's my, beside the carburetor glitch uh, that's the next thing I have to do, and at that point it should be uh, it should be ready to go. And uh, as I said, I'm pretty happy at this point with the way everything's worked out. It's taken me a lot of time, uh, not a heck of a lot of money, uh, since I was able uh, to do uh, so much of it myself. And uh, you know, getting back here, long shot again, the bike. Uh, looks to the casual eye uh, stock and original. It's not uh, any, uh, or not significantly longer than it was before. I haven't measured it, but I think it's about an inch longer than it than it was. Uh, and I'm I'm just re real pleased with it. Uh, just a few more things to to, to attend to. A uh, little final cleanup and polishing and. Uh, everything should be good so thanks for bearing with me through this uh, uh, very unprofessional presentation and uh, hope uh, hope you enjoyed the show